Hello, everyone, and welcome to week six. Let me go ahead here and share my screen. Okay, if you hear any chomping noise on the background is my dog playing with his squeaky toy, so I apologize for that. Um, so this week we're talking about cultural cultural appropriations and our readings for this week are two essays from the um, textbook for the class. And the readings began talking about uh, Native American mascots and basically what these two essays do is talk about different forms of cultural appropriation that take place <clears throat> and what the challenges are with those appropriations. So one of these uh, forms of appropriation we see in Native American mascots in various uh, high school and college teams, um, as well as national teams as well. Uh, one of the arguments in favor of keeping the use of Native American mascots is that it is supposedly honor honoring Native American uh, history and tradition. The problem is that Native Americans themselves aren't asked if they do indeed find this honoring or not. The vast majority actually find it quite offensive. Native Americans also lack any agency in the use of Native American mascots because they don't financially profit from any of the national sports teams that use their images or tribal names. In the few cases when Native tribes have given their permission, the fact that many tribal peoples are spread out throughout the country as a result of the history of forceful relocation is ignored. For instance, the reading talked about the Seminole tribe in Florida giving its permission for the Florida Seminoles to continue to use their tribal name. However, Seminoles in Oklahoma had no say in the matter. Native American mascots also uphold the idea that Native Americans reside in the past and therefore can be easily forgotten. And the fact that they are also used the same way that other teams use animals as mascots um, also upholds the idea that they can be easily compared to animals. This quote from the reading best encapsulates the problem with race-based symbols. With divisive symbols, some people find themselves on the positive self-esteem enhancing side of the symbol, while others are positioned negatively to it and find themselves insulted. This is problematic since symbols form the ubiquitous background to our daily lives. For symbols that generate offense for some, those people may feel as though they are under attack by others or even by the entire society around them. These kinds of symbols are reminders, are reminiscent of what we discussed in the last couple of weeks regarding how images of African Americans have been used historically to dictate their role and societal place. Chief Wahoo image, which is pictured here, is similar to the Sambo image we talked about before and its exaggerated features and it's used as a comical entertaining image for a white audience. The Cleveland Indians finally removed this image from their team in 2018, so not really that long ago. However, fans can still purchase merchandise with this image and the team continues to call itself the Cleveland Indians. The reading also discussed studies that have shown the negative impact such images have on the self-esteem of native youth. Also the chanting that goes along with these images during sports events also contrib contribute to this negative self-esteem uh, for a native American youth. Another image that is used both in sports and other public venues like uh, state buildings, um, particularly in the South, is the Confederate flag and the name Rebels for sports teams throughout colleges and high schools in the Southeast in particular. The argument in favor of, con of the continuing use of these images is that they are not symbols of racism, but are instead symbols of Southern pride um, and Southern culture. The argument, um, However, the history, sorry about that, the history of the flag clearly demonstrates that it was used during the Civil War when Southern states seceded specifically in order to protect their rights to continue to own slaves and thus subjugate an entire people. For African Americans then, the Confederate flag is not just a reminder of that history, but also a symbol that continues to represent their subjugation. 
the fact that the Confederate flag is still used by white supremacist groups throughout the country connects the flag's meaning to racist hatred. And also the uh, reading talked about the history of the Confederate flag being used at different moments um, historically when um, African Americans have fought for their rights and sort of the response to that, the, the um, resistance to that has been um, by white supremacist groups and you often see the Confederate flag used in, um, as a symbol of that resistance. One example of this Confederate legacy that we talked about was the University of Mississippi's use of the Colonel Reb image, uh, depicting a plantation owning Southern gentleman. Although the image is no longer officially used by the university, active campaigns to reinstate the use of the image are ongoing and merchandise with the image is still sold and used by fans. So even though um, you, you were seeing sports teams, um, especially in the last couple of years, um, in different institutions um, deciding that these images are not appropriate and doing something about it, that doesn't mean that the images completely disappear or that people no longer see these images um, and or that people accept that those images are no longer, uh, should no longer be in use. There's still a lot of resistance. There's still a lot of um, advocating um, by alums, for instance, of the universities that have taken these kinds of images off um, to reinstate them. In order to reflect on how to make changes to these symbols, the reading suggests two important questions. Um, that we should really ask us, ourselves. So one is, who should have the power to dictate what an honor is? Right? Um, and the other, uh, particularly when it comes to the use of the Confederate flag and those kinds of images in the South, um, to really you know, ask ourselves, why would Southerners wish to be affiliated with symbols that are offensive and divisive? We also need to consider why when change does happen, it often takes place following violent events like the killings that took place in a black church in South Carolina in 2015, where nine African-Americans were shot and killed during their Bible study meeting by 22-year-old Dylan Roof, whose lawyers are currently appealing his guilty verdict, arguing that he was mentally ill. After this incident, a number of state governments took down their Confederate flags um, in, in the South. But again, why do we have to wait right, for something so tragic to happen before people decide to take these kinds of images off of their buildings, their institutions, their teams, and so on? In essay 23, the author discusses other forms of cultural appropriation, such as when non-African-Americans use hairstyles, fashion, or other African-American-based styles, and claim this is a way to show appreciation. The problem is that these same styles, when used by African-Americans, they experience discrimination. For example, hairstyles um, where African-Americans have been um, fired for those ha hairstyles or from their employment or children put, uh, punished in schools for using these hairstyles that are natural to their particular hair texture, but are considered trendy, especially when appropriated by white celebrities. And the reading talked ab about a number of examples of that. Another form of appropriation is the use of religious symbols, such as the Hindu uh, bindi and Native American headdress by individuals who not belong to these cultural or religious groups including other people of color. And here we see this image of Beyonce appropriating Desi culture. Um, this was for a music video and um, she got heavily critiqued by um, South Asian uh, uh, folks who felt that this was not appropriate um, to do. Another thing that uh, uh, the reading talked about and that we see as we're coming up to Halloween soon are Halloween costumes um, and how uh, these are used um, to appropriate certain um, cultures. And you might've seen in the past, usually around Halloween time, you start seeing a lot of um, social media information um, and slogans uh, saying um, my something to the effect of um, my culture isn't a costume. Right. Um, and so the reading talks about the problems with cultural appropriating Halloween costumes. 
They exaggerate features of another person's culture. Um, these mass produced costumes are devoid of cultural meaning. Some of these uh, forms of dress have particular cultural meanings, but when you mass produce them in this manner, um, for anyone to consume, um, that cultural meaning disappears. And costumes are often sexualized, as you see in some of the um, costumes depicted here in this image. In this essay, the author introduces these two particular concepts to talk about the problems with cultural appropriation. <clears throat> One is uh, the idea of a dominant culture, um, stating that this refers to the culture of the group with the most social, political, and economic power, and by extension becomes the referent group of public discourse. So this dominant culture <clears throat> as the culture of a group that has social, political, and economic power um, gets to determine uh, for other people, um, for what are called um, the oppressed groups, uh, what is honoring to them or not, right? Or um, how to depict other uh, populations. The other concept that the reading talked about was oppressive othering, how one group seeking domination over another frames the subordinate group as morally or intellectually inferior. And we see that depiction in many of these images that we've talked about. As the reading states, when cultural appropriation occurs, the culture of an oppressed group is taken on by a dominant group. Cultural significance is often left out during the adaptation process and what remains are features or elements of the oppressed culture as adapted by members of the dominant group, right? Um, so again, the dominant group gets to decide in their depictions using these symbols, what they think of, right? These um, different cultural and ethnic groups um, and really kind of silence, right? What those groups think about themselves, how they would choose to uh, represent themselves which would not be through many of these kinds of images, right? Um, okay, so this ends our uh, lecture for this week. Please remember that you have a response paper due at the end of this week on Sunday. Um, the assignment is up and available um, on Canvas and I look forward to uh, reading your response papers. Have a wonderful week. See you next time.